there's, there's two things when I was evangelizing Brother Tuttle there were two things that I kept notes on growing churches had two things in common number one they were strong in prayer and holiness we, we need we need some North Star ministries a North Star is always where it's supposed to be that's how they navigated their ships was by the North Star now I guarantee you a shooting star gets a lot more attention than the North Star but you can't navigate your life by the shooting star because they're here today they're tomorrow they're the next day and then eventually they're gone but give me an apostolic church that remains apostolic give me a church matter of fact matter of fact I'll tell you this I go, I go places that I've never been before and I give them they don't know that if they watch tonight they'll know it but I, I give them the test to see how well the preaching's going to be if it's going to be hard or easy I begin to say I'm glad to be an apostolic preacher and by apostolic I mean apostle like and we baptize like the apostles baptized we believe in water baptism immersion in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins we believe in receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues we believe there's only one God that he was manifested as the father of creation the son of redemption and in the Holy Ghost we believe in holiness Inwardly, outwardly, what do, you, what, do we, what do we say? Internally, externally, and eternally. Now, you may be seated, but not every place I go and say that reacts like that. And when they don't, I say to myself, Kenny, oh boy, it's going to be rough around here for a couple nights. Because if you have fallen out of love with the main message... <clears throat> glad to be in an apostolic church but not only did I notice that successful churches were apostolic in prayer and holiness but they were also apostolic in giving they emphasized missions giving and uh, no wonder tonight we're here and uh, we have two things on the agenda we have two things in our future and that is supporting missions to reach the world and also we got a new auditorium we need to build around here. We've got a new building we need to see built. And the greatest revival, the greatest revival, the greatest move of God that the FAC of Maryville ever experienced was when we were in that second building. People were coming two hours early to get a seat. I had prepared a plan to raise one million dollars to add on to the back of that building. I had, it all, I had it all planned out. I knew what the finances of the church were. I knew, I knew pretty well what to expect as far as giving was coming in. And that million dollars was going to take a couple of years to raise. And I had it all planned out. Had it all planned out. New Year's Eve watch night service, I was going to present it. December 31st of that year, I was in the auditorium, it was dark, and I had my plans that I was going to present on a piece of paper. And I was waving it before the Lord and asking the Lord to anoint it and bless it when I got up to ask for pledges. When if I've ever heard, Bishop Edwards, if I've ever heard God speak to me, He spoke to me and He said, My son, my coming is soon. I want you to begin to give to missions as never before. And I will take care of the new sanctuary. I got up to a congregation that's coming two hours early to get a seat. We had a hundred people dedicated that they would rise and give someone else their seat that night. 
and I told that church congregation and they bought into it and we began to give to missions we began to to, to, to aggressively give to missions we began we begin to uh, uh, have uh, uh, all kinds of functions where we raise money for missions we begin to ask our church family to set aside money out of their weekly paycheck to go to missions we we begin to tithe on the tithe at our church to missions we we begin to do all that and without the aid of an evangelist without the aid of an evangelist something began to happen. In six weeks' time, we baptized without an evangelist, without us having a, 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 a lot of Bible studies taught with the, with the expectation of a lot of baptisms. Six weeks' time, we baptized over 60 people in the name of Jesus Christ. We begin to send money out to the missionaries. But unexpected money begin to come in for the building program. See, folks, God's got his hand on this tonight. I, I, I'll share this with you, and I want to I'll share this with you, and I want to get into my scripture. Um, my wife and I did some counseling with a precious woman that was going through a horrible time in her life. And um, God filled her with the Holy Ghost during a counseling session we were having. And, and um, the woman was going through a horrible, a horrible divorce, and it was, it was terrible. She called up one day, and she said, I need for you, your wife and you to meet me at an attorney's office. And um, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, she asked for us to meet her there, and we did, and... We went into an office, uh, Brother Tuttle, and it was, a, it was a long table there. And as far as you could see, there were, there were contracts down, down the table. And I sat down, and the lawyer informed me that this woman had come in for, through a settlement, that she had come in to um, several houses, a farm, and a, a lot of pieces of property. And I'm nodding my head as if, what's the catch? And the attorney said, she is wanting to deed this all over to FAC of Maryville. And, and I'm going to tell you, I got a little nervous, you know. I, I, and, and I kept, I kept, I had the attorney, I had this lady there, and I kept saying, now, I didn't, I didn't coach you to do this. I've not, I, I, you know, I was thinking cultish, you know. I, I don't, I don't want to get in the paper for being a cult or something. I, I, I didn't, I didn't coach you to do this, right? No, you didn't. And finally, the attorney spoke up and said, Reverend, I think she's just trying to bless your church. <laughs> when all of that real estate was sold, we were able to start our building program with what we were going to try to raise with over one million dollars but we would have never had it had we not had a mind on missions. We would not had a mind on missions. Let me, let, me get in, let me get into the word tonight. I'm sorry for being sidetracked for a moment. That kind of happens when I get comfortable. I, I will keep my shoes on, I promise you. Um, would you stand for the reading of God's word? I also want to welcome some dear friends of ours here tonight, the Brother and Sister Nichols from Port Arthur. And we love them very much, and we're so glad to have them with us this evening. The book of Exodus, chapter 25, and verse number 23. If you're ready, say amen. amen. God said, Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood, and two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit shall be the breadth thereof, a cubit and a half the height thereof. Thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold about it. Thou shalt make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about. <clears throat> Thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. Thou shalt make for it four rings of gold and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. And thou shalt make the staves of shot of wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be borne with them. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, covers thereof, bowls thereof, to cover with all of pure gold that shalt thou make them. 
Listen real closely to verse 30. It's where I'll get my text tonight. And thou shalt set upon the table shewbread, shewbread, before me. And look at that last word, always. I want to preach for a few moments tonight on there's always bread on the table. There's always bread on the table. Father, I love you tonight. Thank you, God, for this tremendous anointing of your spirit that we feel. God, I pray that you would continue to bless this church, Eastgate. God, I pray that as it is an Antioch church, God, that your anointing rests upon this building, that, God, if we could see with the eye of the spirit, we would see the Shekinah glory cloud resting over this building. God, tonight, would you use your servant to feed your people? God, would you use me, God, to inspire faith that we may have an impact, oh God, in this region? God, this region needs apostolic revival before the trumpet sounds. Our families need to be saved. Addictions need to be broken. Eyes need to be open to the truth. Oh God, if you'll anoint me tonight, God, I'll give you the praise, I'll give you the honor, and I'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Give God a hand of praise as you're being seated. There's always bread. There's always bread on the table. Oh, the beauty of the Old Testament tabernacle. Every pastor, every preacher here tonight loves the subject of the tabernacle. Oh, what a subject, the tabernacle. We preach on the tabernacle and teach on the tabernacle several times a year. The tabernacle is full of typology. We find throughout the tabernacle the plan of salvation. Only one gate to get in, and Jesus is that one gate. We find repentance and baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We find the oneness of the Godhead and the layers of the covering of the tent. We find all of these beautiful things, and, and it seems like we have never exhausted the subject of the tabernacle. Just when you think, man, I've heard everything about the tabernacle. Somebody will, will, will teach something and, and you'll see it as never before. Uh, our missionary in, in uh, Lebanon, Brother Azar, was teaching in the Bible college there and they were teaching on the tabernacle and uh, some of the students began to question him that they see immersion in water in the labor but they, 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 were, they were questioning him on they didn't feel there was any typology to the name of Jesus upon the labor that was there. And so instead of doing like we do, separate when we don't agree, uh, they decided that they would have prayer and fasting over the subject. It wasn't but a day or so later that one of the young men studying got the revelation. He said, I've got it. He said, uh, it's in the water. He said, what do you mean it's in the water? The Bible says that that rock that followed them through the wilderness, that that rock that they got the water from that followed them through the wilderness, that that rock was Christ. They said, we've got the name in baptism. We've got, we have got that name. How beautiful that tabernacle. How, how beautiful that tabernacle was. And of course, we know in Exodus 25 and 2, it says, speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart shall you take my offering. In other words, God said, I don't want anything in this tabernacle to be given out of necessity. I don't want anything given in this tabernacle that you don't want to give. I want it to come from a willing heart. Oh, don't you want to have a willing heart? He said, I want it to come, become of a willing heart. Of course, we understand that the materials they had to build the tabernacle was what they brought out of Egypt. That was their material. They, they had the material 
that they had gotten when they came out of Egypt, the gold and the silver and the brass and, and the cloth, they had got it when they came out of Egypt and God said, this is what I want you to take, what you have gotten from Egypt, I want you to build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. We've often, we've just come through the season uh, of the wise men bringing those gifts of frankincense and gold. And why was that? Because it would be soon that the baby Jesus would need to go to Egypt and this poor carpenter, uh, Joseph, had not the money to make a long trip into Egypt, but it was financed by the gold of the wise men. And I'm here to tell you tonight that we still need to take our earnings that we bring out of Egypt and finance the work of God that is among us. We, we still need, we still need that. It's interesting to note that we can do one of two things with the gold that we bring out of Egypt. They did one of two things with the gold. There were those that wanted to return back to Egypt and worship like they did in Egypt. So they took the gold that they made from Egypt, took from Egypt, and they made a golden calf out of it. It was never God's will for them to make a golden calf. It was God's will for them to have a sanctuary. You remember the story of the golden calf. They ground it into powder, mixed it into water, and they had to drink the gritty substance of gold. It went through their digestive system, and I don't mean to get graphic tonight, it went through their digestive system and into the sewer. So the moral of the story is simply this. You can take what God gives you and let it go into the sewer or you can take what God gives you and let it build a sanctuary. I believe here at Eastgate we've got some sanctuary builders. I want to build, I want to build a sanctuary. We have a custom, we have a custom. We, we, we had it all through our three children and into our grandchildren. We have a custom, or may I say a tradition. Every child that Penny and I have had, we have the custom and the tradition of bringing them from the hospital and before they go to the, our home where we prepared a room. We have it on video. We take them to the house of God. And I show them the house of God. And I show them the church, the auditorium they're going to be in. And I show them around through the classrooms. Because that's the reason we build a house of worship. We build it for those that need God. What would it be? A sewer or a sanctuary? He said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. How beautiful the unity of the people they gave, the things they took out of Egypt. They built altars, labors, tables, and the list goes on and on. And the fire and the cloud rested upon the presence of the tabernacle. But not only was God interested in giving directions about the tabernacle and how it would be built, but he also told them how they should live. He said, you will pitch your tents around the tabernacle. You will have so many on the east and so many on the west and so many at the north and the south. You will, you will live around the tabernacle. In other words, I won't revolve around you, but you will revolve around me. Do we understand tonight that the house of God is not one of the most important places on this earth? The house of God is the most important place upon this earth. Aren't you glad for the house of God? Aren't you glad for the place that you go and you worship God? Oh, how beautiful it must have been on a stormy night with a baby with a fevered brow Pastor Tuttle, how comforting it must have been for that mom and that dad to hold that child with that fever and begin to look across the tabernacle at the glow of the fire and the Shekinah glory of God. 
What a comfort it must have been, whatever trouble they would have, that they were not far from seeing the presence of the Lord in the tabernacle. What a, what a beauty, what a comfort, what a routine that was. But you understand, in life, nothing down here is permanent. Our lives have been changed by one phone call. Our lives that we love so much and the beauty of the tabernacle and the beauty of our lives and the beauty of routine and the beauty of midweek Bible studies and Sundays and the beauty of a husband coming home, the beauty of kids living right, the beauty of finances and jobs. All of a sudden, with one phone call, one letter, our lives can be turned upside down down upside down so it was with the tabernacle it was never God's will for the tabernacle to be permanent the tabernacle was made to be portable was made to move it was made to be disassembled and moved to a new place to a new location closer to Canaan it was made for that so the children of Israel had to come to grips that our routine will be disturbed. We see the order of the tabernacle. We see the fire on the altar. We feel the coolness of the water in the laver. We see the glory cloud resting over the ark of the covenant. But all of a sudden, without them knowing, God would order for the tabernacle to move. They had order for how to disassemble the tabernacle. They knew that the first thing that would happen, someone would go in and cover the Ark of the Covenant with a cloth. The Ark would not be seen on the outside. You, you know, as I, as I go back and forth between the, uh, the, the, the reality of this, you, you know, I, I really don't care who you are. We all go through seasons of time when we're beginning to ask, God, are you still there? God, it used to be that three hallelujahs and I was talking in tongues. God, it used to be three thank you Jesuses and I was, I was in the heavenly, but God, it seems like you have been covered up, God. Can I tell you, it's not that God has left you. It is that God is leading you because you should never be led by an emotion. We should be led by the truth that is in God's word. He's God when you can feel him and he's God when you can't. He's God when you can understand him and he's God when you don't understand him. He's God when things are going your way and he's God when things are not going your way. Could you give him some praise then? Can you give him some praise? Oh, hallelujah. He's God when new families are joining the church. He's God when families are leaving the church. He's God when they're patting you on the back. He's God when they're stabbing you in the back. He's God when you've got a pocket full of money. He's God when you are flat, broke, busted, and disgusted. He is still God. He's God. I wish somebody just shout, he's God. The Ark of the Covenant was covered up. The tent, the walls, the fence was taken down. And all of a sudden, what had beautiful order now looked like a long train of rummage cell material being moved along. Boards on wagons. Things covered up. You see the light of the candlestick. They had to go and snuff out the candlestick and put a cloth over it. They had to they had to go and take the laver and dump the water out of the laver and cover it up. And oh yes, even the fire on the altar, they scooped it out and put it in small trays and carried it along. What once had been on fire now had a cloth over it. What once held water of refreshing had a cloth over it. What once was the symbol of routine and comfort for our lives. <clears throat> we are now just in the desert sands. We're walking. There's no glow of the Shekinah when my baby has a fever. There's no glow of the presence of God. There's no routine now that the tabernacle is being taken apart. But there was one thing I believe God left them with as a comfort. He said, when you go to the table of shoe bread, 
He said you're going to first lay a blue cloth on it and you're going to put all of the bowls and the spoons and everything that deals with that. And then he said you're going to put bread on that table. And then you're going to cover that bread with a scarlet with a scarlet cloth. I can hear someone, let me use my imagination just for a moment. I can hear a mama and a daddy talking to their little boy and little girl as the tabernacle had been disassembled and going by. And they said, well, what's that? Well, I really don't know what that is. What's that? I really don't know. Well, Dad, there's a lot you don't know about this. What do you know? Well, I know one thing. I know that there's always bread on a table. I, I know there's no water in the laver. I know there's no fire on the altar. But I know somewhere there's some bread. God said let the bread always be upon the table. I can't promise you I'm always going to preach a shout into your spirit. I can't promise you I'm always going to preach and make everything happily ever after. But I can tell you to come back Wednesday night because there'll be bread on the table there'll be bread on the table I don't know how old this church is but however old it is it's not here because we've shouted it's not here because we've operated in the gifts it's here because every service there is bread that's upon the table I don't know if you're gonna get healed or not, but there's bread on the table. I don't know if your marriage is gonna come back together, but there's bread on the table. I don't know if your prodigal daughter is coming out of the rehab house, but there's bread on the table. And that's all that I need to know is there's bread. You know why I need to come back Wednesday night? I don't need to come back Wednesday night because there's a, a guest speaker. I need to come back Wednesday night because there's bread on the table. And I'm gonna tell you if you'll believe in the bread, the Bible tells us I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. When you are in trouble, get to the house of bread. When you are in need, get to the house of bread. Don't you go trying to find some so-called prophet to, to give you a word from God and you stay home from church. You get to the house of God and you let the bread that's on that table. Come on, clap your hands for a moment. Oh, yes. I'm here to tell you tonight, when life falls apart, when life falls apart and friend every demon in hell has got your address when life falls apart on you and, and you really don't know when you're coming out of what you're going through the sustaining thing about your life is there's always bread on the table oh David is running for his life David the anointed is running from the unanointed jealous Saul David where are you going to run from Saul I'll tell you where I'm going to run. I'm going to go to the house of God. Well, David, why in the world would you go to the house of God? Because David knew there's some bread at the house of God. And when David went to the house of God and told the priest, have you got any bread? The priest said, the only bread that we have here is the shoe bread on the table. David said, that's good enough for me. Bring out the shoe bread on the table. But David got more than shoe bread. David got a Goliath sword. Isn't it wonderful when we begin to get the bread that we remember back when God brought us out? Come on, don't you remember back when God made a way? Don't you remember when God gave you that job? God gave you that job. If you praise God when God gave it to you, praise God when you don't have it anymore. How about that when that cancer report, when that cancer report was removed, there's always, oh God. Oh God. I wish somebody would shout, there's always bread on the table. I may not always have a dance, but I've always got bread. I may not always feel safe, but I've always got bread. I've always got some bread. I've got some bread. I've got some bread. In order, oh God help me tonight. 
praise God, I feel the Holy Ghost. In order for East Gate to go forward, which is God's plan and God's will, the tabernacle had to be disassembled in order that in the order that God prescribed, in order for East Gate to go forward. Don't think it's strange in the days to come because you have never pushed forward in the spirit without the resistance of the adversary. But when East Gate doesn't look like, and I'm not talking about holiness, I'm talking about, I'm just talking about life when it doesn't look like what it used to look like, don't leave her, don't forsake her. She's moving to a higher ground. She's going closer to her divine call. She's gonna be set up again. She's gonna be functional again. Let me. There's always bread. David said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Come on, let's bring it down to the New Testament. Jesus said in John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that believe, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Look at verse 48. I am the bread of life. No wonder he said, Lo, I'm with you always even to the end of the world. He said there'll be bread on my table always. And Jesus said, my God. Woo, hallelujah. Stay with me for a moment. Stay with me for a moment, please. You, you may be seated if you want to stand. That's, that's fine too. Who, cannot, who can't follow? Who can't follow Jesus, the miracle worker? Who can't follow him when he's walking on water, shutting the mouths of the scribes and the Pharisees? Who can't follow him when there's not a disease he just doesn't heal immediately? Who can't follow him when the water is turned into wine? Who can't follow him when Lazarus comes out, Jairus' daughter, the woman with the issue of blood? And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. But what about when you watch his hands be tied? What about when you watch them begin to take their hands and smite him across the face? What about when they smite him and put a crown of thorns on his head? What about when they march him out with no decency at all, naked there? What about Isaiah said, they will beat him to the place that you would not recognize him? I wonder, now this is just me, but I wonder, when that old Roman guard soldier said, a king is he? Say he's a king. A king needs a robe. Go over there and get that scarlet covered, colored robe and lay it over him. He's beaten to where you don't recognize him. He's not walking on water anymore. Nobody's being resurrected. He is arrested. He's been beaten. You don't even recognize him anymore. I wonder if when they put that robe around him that through one of the swollen eyes that Jesus didn't say to us, don't give up on me now. I'm gonna move you to a greater location. I've been with you, oh my God, but I shall be in you. I'm gonna allow you to do greater things. Please, don't give up on me. I'm just moving. I wish somebody praise him. I wish somebody understand right now. Your life has been turned upside down. 
You were glad to see 2023 leave, but you're not so certain that 2024 is going to be any difference. But I've come from Tennessee to tell you, in the name of the Lord, there is bread on the table. There is bread. I don't care how many disappointing news you get. You lift up your hands and you begin to praise God. If your husband didn't come back this year, it may be next year. You just keep on and on. Somebody shout, there's bread on the table. I'll tell you how powerful, you may be seated, I'll tell you how powerful it is. I'll tell you how powerful it is. I'll tell you how powerful it is for bread to be on the table. The prodigal son has wasted all his money, all of his inheritance. He is in a hog pen. He, he doesn't have another, another dime to go get drunk. He doesn't have another dime to get a harlot. He is at the lowest point that he's ever been in all of his life. But he says this in Luke 15, 17. And when he came to himself, he said, how many servants of my father have bread enough? He didn't talk about how thick the robes were. He didn't talk about how thick his mouth was when he got as low as he could he said my my servants my daddy's servants have bread and enough bread bread now I told you the side of the story this morning I told you the side of me and my brother being put in the Christian school I told you my side of the story but my brother decided to go a different direction. He decided not to believe the bread that was on the table. When our pastor taught us not to date out of the faith, we don't do none of that missionary dating. We don't believe in that flirt to convert. Hey, Lord. See, I... I He didn't do none of that bread on the table that we were to be submit ourselves to our pastor. If our pastor said we don't go there, we don't go there. But he didn't submit to that part. He believed he believed he could date who he wanted to date, go where he wanted to go, and when he wanted to go. Which led him to a life of drugs. Drug addiction. And in an evening of being out of his head on drugs, he committed the most horrible crime. This crime, if you give me the first picture, please. That's my baby brother right there, 18 months younger than me. There he is. That's what freedom looks like, young people. That's what it looks like when you don't want to believe the word of God. That's what it looks like when you say, there ain't no man going to tell me what to do. I'm not going to be told by them. For 34 and a half years, Bishop Edwards, 34 and a half years, they told him what to do. They told him what to wear. They told him where he could be and what time he should be there. They controlled everything about his life for 34 and a half years. He got probation after 34 and a half years. I went there. I was the one on July 1st that went there five years ago and picked him up from the prison there. Normally I go and uh, would see him this time I went in the middle of the day and I went in and told them I'm here to pick up Jerry Neal Carpenter. The warden told me, he said, I want you to go back to your car. He said, the news outlet has already been here and I've not allowed them to video close to the building. But said, if you'll just stand out here, said in a few minutes, in a few minutes, said he'll come out that side door 
to come out that side door. He said, you get him in your car and said, whatever y'all want to take a picture, whatever you do, but said, please don't do it outside your car. About an hour later, I stood there and a man, I didn't recognize. See, for 34 and a half years, all I had seen my brother in was a prison suit. But now he comes around the corner of a building with a ball cap and khakis and a polo shirt on and a plastic garbage bag over his back. Everything he had accumulated in 34 and a half years. That's what freedom looks like. And the famous last words, and I pick it up in the Holy Ghost tonight, the famous last words is, it won't happen to me. It's the famous last words. He came out of that place, we got in the car, and you see, he hadn't been in a car in 34, he hadn't been in a car in 34 and a half years. Car, cars had changed. That GPS come on, told me to turn left at the corner. He jumped almost out of the car. He said, who in the world's in this car with us? I said, Jerry, I'm going to take you to three places today that you're going to have to learn how to operate in. If you're going to make it outside, you're going to have to learn. I'm going I'm to take, take you to three places. He said, brother, lay it on me. I said, the first place is a restaurant. I just passed it coming in here called Cracker Barrel. We're going to Cracker Barrel for lunch. I said, the second place, when we get back to Maribel, I'm going to take you to a, I'm going to take you to a super center called Walmart. He said, no, I remember Walmart now, that little drugstore. I said, oh, buddy, things have changed since you've been gone. I said, the third thing, Jerry, I'm going to take you by the church. And you know what he began to ask me on the way to Maryville, 100 miles? He said, Kenny, do the women still wear their hair long? He said, Kenny, do they still shout and run the eye? Now, so help me. He'd been 34 years in prison. Do they still shout and run the aisles? Yeah. Because 34 and a half years can never take the place that there's always bread. Lord. I took him, my, my, my mother, the one that the one you may be see the one that put the check down for he and I to go to the Christian school my mother at that time had dementia and my prayer was was God don't let my mother die before she can see him out of, out of the correctional center so if you give me the next picture I took him home and there's me on the left and my little mama right there between us and there's my brother and, and uh what a, what a wonderful time we had. He's my, he's my baby brother, but although my mother had dementia, she was still real sharp. She said, Kenneth, you look like my young son. I said, oh, Mom, I know it. I, I know, I know. <laughs> he was to spend one night, he was to spend one night in our house, and I had to take him to Nashville to go through a six weeks program of getting acclimated or reacclimating back into the public so he spent one night he spent one night at our house the next morning he got up I woke him up for breakfast and, and his eyes were swollen shut I said you got any Jerry you got allergies what he said no he said I cried most of the night so what'd you cry for he said that bed upstairs is so comfortable said I pulled the sheet back and said there's a foam mattress on top of the mattress said I slept for 34 years on a mattress no thicker than the foam that you had on top of your mattress and said I couldn't and oh by the way young folks that's what freedom looks like I took him to Nashville put him in the house there called an apostolic preacher friend of mine brother Nate Batson I told him my brother was down at that house and I would appreciate if sometime if he would just check on my brother and I gave him the number. I hadn't even got to the airport in Nashville. I was flying out of Nashville 
It was about two hours later. I hadn't got to the airport. And my brother called me on my cell phone. He said, Kenny. He said, there's some dude out here in the car looking for me. Said he knows you. I said, well, ask him his name. I could hear him. Nate Batson. I said, oh, yeah, I know him. said, hey, he wants to take me to dinner. I said, well, go, go with him. The next morning, I flew out to the uh, West Coast, and there's a time difference there. And early in the morning, I get a call from Jerry, and he said, Kenny, that guy's here again. <laughs> wants to take me to a place called Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. He wants to take me to. I, I said, well, well, we'll go with him. And Nate got a hold of him that week. And for the first Sunday that he was out after 34 and a half years, he went to an apostolic church and look what happened. There's always bread. There's always bread on the table. Don't you give up on your prodigal. Don't you give up on your family a new church building because we've got to get our prodigals in here. There he is. God refilled him of the Holy Ghost that Sunday morning. That's been over five years ago. That's been over five years ago. He was supposed to come back to Maryville after six weeks. After six weeks, he called me and said, Kenny, he said, Pastor Nate really needs me down here. <laughs> said they've got me a little camper trailer that I'm staying in and said they really need me. Said, uh, uh, said uh, I found out that they were having a hard time getting people to mow the grass. I said, I've been mowing the grass down here. and I've been doing this. He's, the, he's five years into it now. He's their church maintenance man. <laughs> give, me, give me the next picture. That's what happens when there's bread on the table. That's what happens when there's bread on the table. Can I tell you, Mama, Mama, did you ever know when you laid that check down on that counter and you paid for your boys to go to a Christian school, Mama, did you have any idea one would be a preacher, the other would go to prison, but at the end of the day, there would be bread on the table. Now, now, now this next picture, give me the, I think it's the last one. Give me the last one, right there, right there. I am, we were at a dinner on Tuesday night at our Pigeon Forge campus. We've got a, we've got a church up in Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg that I go to and, uh, on Tuesday nights. The man over my shoulder there came to church that night and uh, I began to ask him, was he familiar with apostolic he said let me ask you a question first he said do you have a brother by the name of Jerry I said I do he said he was in cell block A and I was in cell block B and said he taught me water baptism in Jesus name he taught me the infilling of the Holy Ghost he taught me that Jesus I didn't even have a shot at him. My brother had already got him before the pulpit. There's always bread. There's always bread. Now, I want you to remain standing if you would. Our pastor's gonna come and direct us on our pledging tonight, but I'd like to give my last bit of advice. Please allow the Holy Ghost to speak to you tonight. No pledge is too small. Don't allow the enemy to speak in your ear and say, well, so-and-so across the aisle has got money, let him do it. How can God ever bless you if you don't start somewhere? This church is in need of being able to support 127 missionaries. This church needs a new sanctuary. 
And I believe tonight, if we'll trust God and believe God, the seed will be sown on the 2024 Beyond Borders Conference for the missionary and the new auditorium. And I want you to just take a moment right now, and I want you to begin to ask God what he would have you to do. Lift up your voice. I want you to pray right now. I want you to pray. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to pray loud enough that you can hear yourself pray. God, what would you have me do? God, what would you have me do tonight? There's always bread on the table. There's always bread on the table. Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. Come on, why don't we just gather up around the altar and have a few moments of conditioning our hearts about what he would have us to give. God, our future hinges on this. God, our future hinges on this, God. Oh, God, the future of this church, God. God, there are prodigals sprinkled out all over East Texas that are wondering if we still shout. They're wondering, is our women's hair still long? They're wondering, do our men, do our men still worship? Oh, there's bread in this place tonight. There's bread in this house tonight. Come on, pray right now. Before pastor comes and leads us in this, I want your heart to be touched. I want you to pray. Come on, I want you to pray. Oh, God, would you touch East Gate? God, would you move up on East Gate? God, would you move up on East Gate? God, would you touch, God, every family that's here tonight? God, would you touch, oh God? Would you place amounts to be pledged? Would you place it upon the heart of people tonight? God, would you place it, God? Would you place it upon their hearts right now, God? Lord, we, do not, we don't need to look at what we're giving. We need to look at what we're going to receive. We don't need to look at what we're going to lose. We need to look at what we are investing. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you're coming soon. God, we've got to get the work done. God, we've got to get the harvest in, Lord. Oh, come on, pray. Come on, pray, pray right now. I want this to be a spiritual offering. I want this to be a spiritual time of pledging. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, why don't you pray in the spirit? Come on, why don't you pray in the spirit right now? Don't be afraid tonight. God is telling you some amounts. God is placing some amounts on your mind. Don't be afraid tonight. Don't be afraid of that amount tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a willing giver. God loves a willing giver right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now. Right now, before our pastor comes, I want you to lift both hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, in the name of Jesus right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus right now. Continue to worship as pastor comes. Why don't we give the Lord a great praise for his word? There's bread. It's the house of bread. Bethlehem, the house of bread where Jesus comes from. Hallelujah. Well, we come to one of our favorite times of the year is return to your seats. The ushers are going to come by momentarily. And there's going to be a card and an opportunity that you'll have to give towards the greatest cause. What a word from the Lord we've heard. Every, every message that God has sent through his messenger this weekend. Amen. More than a little. Amen. I'm not going to be a vault tonight. I'm going to be a vessel. I'm going to pour out of what God has placed into me. And so tonight we're going to give. I want to give you an opportunity to tonight as we 
we make a pledge and the card that you'll receive momentarily is two part with perforation in it one's marked for you the other is for the church you'll just fill them out identically your first and last name will be on it and then there's a committed amount and there's a faith amount the amount of commitment is what you you've done the math and you know that you can do without the amount with faith now I, the bible says we we do not tempt the lord so i want you to do faith but we're not going to be stupid if that makes sense okay I want us to give a, 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 a pledge. And uh, now if, if, if $6 billion comes in, you go ahead and put that in the offering. Amen. But I want you to take that faith pledge also serious and, and what God can do in, in your lives. And this year, something we've never done is I'm going to give us an opportunity. I'd like to give you an opportunity to give tonight to conclude this missions conference sacrificially. Beyond Borders, uh, we, we don't want to send our missionaries home uh, with $15 and a Chick-fil-A gift card. They don't have Chick-fil-A in Norway. That's why I don't live there here, by the way. It's a cursed, cursed place. Okay, man, got to get Chick-fil-A. But we want to send them home and say, you know what? We love you. We believe in you. Amen? And so tonight, I want us to give as well. I want So you, whatever, you can include that in your commitment amount. And let's, let's raise a sacrificial offering so that we can not go in the red at the beginning, but we can go ahead and say we're going to pay for Beyond Borders. We're going to send our missionaries on, amen, and we're going to let them know we love them. And so tonight we're going to be giving a commitment for the rest of the year, 2024, a faith amount. That's the amount that you're saying, God, if you provide it. Now, when he provides it, you've got to give it. Come on. When that extra whatever comes in the mailbox, you're like, oh, well, looky here, man. I'm going to go get me a new uh, Gucci purse or something. Uh, no, that was God giving you that money. And so you're going to give it to him. And I, I, we could spend the rest of the night with people that have given and uh, pledged and God has come through. But I wonder if you can hit the house and say, I, I've been a part of this for the last nine years. And God has been faithful to provide. He has honored his, my commitment, my pledge. Look across this. Uh, the rest of you say, I haven't been here for nine years, but I've been a part of it. Uh, amen. And God has been faithful to me. Amen. And so he's going to be faithful to you. So as the ushers have been by, if you do not have a card, would you just raise your hand real quick? If you don't have a pledge card yet, go ahead, guys. Let's go quick, fast, and in a hurry. Let's go into Tuttle Speed mode. Amen. Get in your Tesla and push the pedal down. Put it in ludicrous mode and get these guys some cards and I want you to know that as we give, amen, it's an exciting venture and I understand that we are going to be talking about giving more this year than perhaps we ever have. You know I don't get up here and we don't hardly ever get up here. Matter of fact it's probably wrong of me to not talk more about money but this year we're going to be talking about it for where you put your treasure you know I've, I've, I've noticed some things people that, that leave quickly I check their tithe records they don't give they disappear, they're gone and we're leaving, they get the feelings hurt I'm just going to leave and, and change churches and get bad attitudes as a whole, typically those people I, I would put it in the almost 100% bracket they are not contributors to the kingdom of God in finance they're also not participating most in any other form and so what are you saying Pastor Tuttle I'm saying that when you begin to put your treasure into the house of God and into the things of God you know what it does it invests you into this thing you say hard times come but you know what my treasure is linked into that thing and so I'm not going to bail ship I've, I've committed to it and what it does is it links you in and it buys you in to something uh, in a commitment level and then after you have filled this out amen before you put the pen on the paper I, I do want us to pray one more time and then we're going to come and you can just lay it on this altar and uh, I've got Michelle ready to count she's the fastest counter I know I'm going to tell you she can count money amen she's a woman I got all women counting tonight because you know how they are with money they know how to count it normally they're counting it going out but tonight's a good night because we're going to count it coming in hallelujah 
And as it comes in, we're going to celebrate the good things that God is doing. Amen. When bread is on the table, I don't know about you, but when bread's cooking in that oven, I get excited at the scent, come on, of fresh bread. And I want you to know tonight as we begin to give and God begins to provide and use us to advance the great kingdom of God that that, that it's going to be an exciting time in the Holy Ghost. If you have a commitment card, would you just wave it at me real quick? Wave that card at me real quick. Oh, good. That feels good. I feel a little bit of, I needed that. It was hot up here. Okay. Anybody else? Say, I don't have one. Would you just wave your empty hand and say, I want to be a part. Amen. In the balcony. Amen. Praise God. It's going to be an incredible year. In the back, we have uh, someone over here still needing a, a, a uh, commitment card. What an incredible night we've had, an incredible journey. What a beautiful, beautiful group of people that God has gathered together. As I said, this year we'll be raising uh, commitments to build. I said it the first night, though, we're not going to let our missions giving dip or slip. We're going to let it grow. And I confirmation, Brother Carpenter said, as they were giving to missions in building program, God began to provide. And so I just believe God's going to continue to do that. Amen? I said, I believe he's going to continue to do that. And uh, we had guests this morning in the coffee shop. They, they said, oh, pastor, they said, I couldn't find a place to park my car. And I started to apologize. They said, oh, don't apologize. They said, that is awesome. They said, I want to go to a church where I have to look for a parking spot. That means something good's going on. Amen. Come on. So it's a good thing. I'm thankful. I, I love and appreciate you. I get here early. And I see men, they've already, they parked their trucks out in the grass and make room for our guests. Thank you guys for doing that. I promise you we're going to get you some par, uh, concrete at some point. And you know what's going to happen? We're going to get concrete, have a place for you to sit, and you're going to say, you know what I miss? I remember the good old days when I had to park in the grass and had to have, come on, then you're going to romanticize what you complain about. You know what you ought to do is just give thanks in all things, uh, that we are a blessed people. We're parking on the grass. One day we'll park on the concrete, but I hope we don't park long on that concrete because God's going to fill it back up. Come on, and, and there's going to be more Jerry's, come on, that come into the house of God. Uh, can I get an amen? Does anybody have a story kind of like Jerry's story tonight? Can say he has set me free. Amen. As you have that paper in your hand, a pen, if you, need a, if you don't have a pen, uh, I don't know if we have pens. Do we have pens? We have pens. you need a pen? All right. Not pencils. We're not making this where you can erase it. It's permanent. Hallelujah. All right. Lord, I want you to bow your head. I know God's already spoke to you. I want you to, one more time, I want you to let that number be given to you. Confirm it. Amen. Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for these people that you have chosen us in this season, in this time, and in this place, perhaps at least likely in an unknown dot on a map, known to the world, but known to the maker of the world. And now as you move upon the hearts of your creation, the people you've called to advance light into the darkness, I pray. I pray, God, that you would speak uh, with an assurance that with peace they would make their pledge knowing that you have always been faithful to provide. Lord, as they lay that sacrificial offering tonight uh, on this altar, uh, I pray, Lord, that it would find favor as sacrifice always does in your nostrils and that you would visit us uh, in this time of sacrifice, that your presence, Lord, uh, would draw near to us. I pray, Lord, for supernatural uh, a provision in this year. Uh, honor the sacrifice of your people. Let the fire meet us, Lord, as we pledge, as we promise, and as we give. Uh, in the wonderful name of Jesus, uh, and everybody said amen. Amen. I'm going to give you a moment uh, as we sing a worship song and you can take a moment and fill out that card both sides and then you'll uh, tear it apart and bring up that for the church and just lay it across this altar. Lay it in these baskets. Amen. And we will make sure that it gets. And then as you give, if you've got, uh, you can give uh, cash, check, whatever you lay. You don't have to put it in an envelope. Amen. Unless it's cash, you want credit. It's all going to go to missions. Amen. It's all going to go to missions. Of course, you can get on church center. There's a give option. If you're watching online, amen. If you're watching online, I know several of our, our members got called in and are at work and they're watching online. Amen. You can text me. You've got my number. If you don't, it's 409-444-7018. And text me your commitment, your pledge, and we'll get that to uh, 
in. You can give. And we are going to give to the Lord. Amen. And you know what he loves? He loves a cheerful giver. If you're new to Eastgate, some of y'all ain't figured it out yet. But when we say it's time to give, there's an auto response Eastgate has. So let's practice that for all the new people. Come on. It's time to give. Well, that was pretty good. If, if your team lost the ball game, I, I, I said it's time to give. He loves, a, he loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing us something. Oh, my heart soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my In the offering, in the plate, in the uh, uh, basket. You can lay it in the basket here. And as, you, as you pledge, you, you're making an annual pledge. So you would you say, hey, I'm going to give $1 million a month. And you multiply that by 12. If you're not able to do that, ask your, your neighbors, an Eastgate Academy student, how to add. Because they're the best. Amen. And that would be $12 million for the year. Does that make sense on that commitment? So if you, you made a mistake, you can come up here and they'll fix it. But it's an annual pledge. Forgive me for not making that clear. It's an annual pledge. So if you did $1 a month, that's $12 for the year, okay? And, uh, and we're going we're gonna to announce our annual pledge. And then tonight, of course, we're giving cash offering. And that's going to be great. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Get, oh, yes, then get Lord. some happy music ready. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord, completely yes. My soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, that's what we're talking about. You say, oh, I don't know about that. Come on, it's bread is in the, on the table. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fresh bread, you know, Krispy Kreme donuts are coming out hot kind of music, you know. Let's go. Fast, as long as it's fast. We've cried, man, I've cried more than I said. Oh, there we go. There you go.
incredible blessing that, that you might, maybe if you, you're not familiar or new here, one of the great blessings at Escape Church that God has blessed us with are retired missionaries. I'm on t- we talk about veterans and we, we love America, greatest country in the history of the world. Amen. Someone said, what, what country has the best food? I said, America. I mean, I've been to Italy. It's awful. I'm going to tell you what's good. Go down to the Olive Garden and get you some of that food. Italy ain't got nothing on Olive Garden. They, the Italians need to learn how to cook Italian from the Americans. I'm telling you, it's the truth. We are the best. And so God bless, and the reason we're blessed is because we got a great military that keeps us safe, and we're trying to get more of them down onto the border. That's a whole nother subject, but we'll get to that in a few months. But there's, and there's veterans and we honor them. But I'm going to tell you, there's a veteran greater than the one that serves our, our nation. And that's the one that serves the kingdom of God. And we are so incredibly blessed to have Brother Howard and Sister Vonda Smith uh, uh, attending and being members. And I'm going to tell you, these are soul winners. How many years, Brother Smith, did you serve? How many years? 44 years. I was making you sound better. 34 years. How many in Bolivia? 12 in Bolivia? And the rest was in Spain. Isn't that an incredible honor that we have? Amen. I'm going to tell you, they go, they sacrifice. Could have stayed in America. Pastored a great church. And sometimes we, we celebrate the ones that go, but we forget they come home. Young people, when you see Brother and Sister Smith, you honor them. These, these are heroes of faith. And I'm thankful that he's scared. Matter of fact, this morning I got a call from a missionary. They're looking at retirement. And they said, I heard you've got some retired missionaries there. I said, well, we're going to make this a retired missionary haven. How awesome would it be? Come on. Uh, how blessed are we that these are people teaching at our school and impacting it. And then, of course, my mom and dad, they're here. So it's incredible. And we want to make sure that they know we love them. We honor them. And uh, they are, they are, we are blessed. Amen. Throw our number. Okay, here's where we're at. Bridger, can you say it? Say it in Pig Latin. Pig Latin. I can say it in Bridger. <laughs> Our commit it so far is $129,990. For faith, so far, 58740 Come on, you ought to give God praise. There's still a whole lot of cards up here. To st- Come on, we got to get faster singing. It's getting better and 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 better. If you've never been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues, you can get it right now. Come on. Do I have anybody been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost? Brother Shelby Dixon, how's it feeling? Holy Ghost treating you good. Come on. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, you can be baptized in Jesus. Brother Helio, come up here. Let's sing a Dutch song. Come sing in Dutch. And now Brother Helio can sing and he can speak four different languages. Amen. He can speak four different. How many of you want to learn? How many of you? I'll teach you a little Dutch. How many of you want to learn some Dutch? Look. Yeah. Y'all ready? I look at your neighbor. Here we go. You got to say it loud. Say hallelujah. Woo. Look at your neighbor. So you just spoke Dutch. All right. That's good. Okay. Listen. Look. Now say this. Mein Voorganger, Voorganger is, is knap. knap. Do you believe that? Amen. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, My voorganger is knap. My voorganger is knap. Oh. oh. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
y'all believe that? Do you believe that, Brother Carpenter? You'd believe it. All right, what did we just say? My pastor is beautiful. My pastor is handsome. Now, I'm beautiful. I'll take whatever compliment I can get. I had to trick you guys into giving me a compliment, but I, take the, I even take the fake ones. Hallelujah. <laughs> price. Somebody say price. Price. De. De. Here. Price. Price. De. De. Here. Here. How do you say it in, in uh, what other language? Deus seja louvado. Oof. Let's stick with price to here. That was it. <laughs> Oh, let's sing praise him. Praise him in the morning, and then we can sing it in Dutch. All right, y'all know that. That's this is a new song. Y'all ready? Praise him. Come on and praise him. You can praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon. We'll praise. Come on and praise him. Praise him till the sun goes down. Sing it in Dutch. Praise him. Go prijs hem, prijs hem in de morgen, prijs hem in de middag. Prijs hem, go prijs hem, go prijs hem tot de avond. Prijs hem, go prijs hem, go prijs hem in de morgen, prijs hem in de middag. Prijs hem, go prijs hem, go prijs hem tot de avond. Hey, the number one country that watches our live stream is Holland. Did y'all know that? That's pretty cool. So we got them watching from the Netherlands. I think number two is Spain. There's number five, I think, is Australia that tunes in and watches. So, hey, how about we all turn to that camera right back there and sing it to all those Dutchies watching, and maybe we can get some Dutch money in here. Come on, right there, that middle camera. Hey, prijs him. Come on. Oh, prijs him. Oh, prijs him in the morgen. Hey, prijs him in the middag. Prijs him. Go prize him. Man, y'all let him down. Come on, try more time. Hey. Prize him. Come on in. Go prize him. Go prize him in the morning. Prize him in the middle. Go prize him. Go prize him. Go prize him to the avond. Right now we're at 215,831 committed, 135,601 faith. Amen. Come on, you ought to give God praise. We're going to get over 300,000. Hallelujah. Hey, when I was in Holland, I was the, I was, my, we started a church. Uh, Dad did. There was one, one lady. She was 81 years old when we got there. And so we rented a community center and we started having church. And, uh, and then got, got that up and running, gave that to some guy, to pastor, and we went to Josefelt right outside of Amsterdam. At that time, I'm 10 or 11 years old, and we started another church, and the same thing. There was an elderly lady there. She was 81. We called her Grandma Oma. Amen. And uh, community center we rented uh, had, uh, uh, had a little, uh, like a bar in the back. And so my mom made a curtain, covered up the bar. And uh, uh, it was really bad. We, we, uh, I was the song leader. That's how bad it was. My mom, she was the accordion player. She did a great job. Amen. She was a great, she, she knew three great songs, Amazing Grace, Praise Him, and Because He Lives. And, uh, and so I, 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 this, I don't ever put this on my resume, Brother Carpenter, but I'm also a songwriter. And uh, what, what was great with me leading worship, in one service, we doubled. We went from one member to two members. Now, y'all are like, that's only one person. But let me tell you, sometimes it just sounds, does it sound better we added one or does it sound better we doubled? What sounds better? It's not a lie, we doubled. And some of you can make, find a way to make something good sound bad. What you need to learn how to do is make something good, come on, sound even a little better. It's all right to be, come on, it's all right to be happy. Amen. We doubled in one service and we got Sister Annie Kopenkha. She was 67 years old, so we made her a member of the youth group. It was a great thing, amen. And Annie Kopenkha would ride her bicycle to church. And, uh, and I would sing and 
and we would sing together and, and so I'd sing praise him every Sunday we'd sing praise him well, I finally got sick and tired of it and uh, I said I'm going to add to my add to my, my singing here and I'm going to write a song and uh, dad, I, dad I remember one time I was sitting on the front row I'd set up all the chairs and dad said Matthew you, you, uh, you need to be praying about what songs we're going to sing and I said, well, we only have three songs she can play. It's Amazing Grace because he lives and praise him. I can pray about the order. Now, my strategy was and still is start slow and work high. You know what I mean? So you start with Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. You go, because he lives. I can. And then you go in to praise him hoping there'll be such a blowout. Dad, don't preach and we can go home early. You know, that's when, that was my strategy at 11. I was shooting for the blowout even though I only had two people. And, uh, and, and, and so anyway, I would, I, we would sing Because He Lives and Mom would play the accordion Because He Lives, um, that I, I, I can face tomorrow. And Annie Copenkot, 67 years old, she'd sit on that second row right there and she'd stand up, hands would begin to tremble. She'd sing Because He Lives, I can face tomorrow. And it was in a, in a, in a little community center, Brother Capaldi, that I'd clean up. I was the head janitor, <laughs> music director, and uh, pretty much just the all-around slave. You talk about church hurt. I have experienced it firsthand. It was church abuse. And they'd come in. We'd come in on Sunday, and it'd smell like beer and throw up because they'd partied the night before, and, and I was the janitor, and I'd clean it up, Brother Gunner. And there was no air conditioner. We'd open up these windows, a little square box of a building, Mom's little curtain covering up a bar. And... Uh, and we'd start singing. We didn't have all the fancy jazz that we have here tonight. And uh, because he lives, and she'd stand up, old sister Annie Copenkind, and she'd start singing, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And uh, then she'd start singing, amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. My mom's over, you know. <laughs> then I'd go to praise him. And I started writing songs and I started singing praise him. Next Sunday I'm saying love him. Yeah. That was a new verse I wrote to it. And then I'd sing jo anything spiritual that I could put in there, you know, like whatever I could put in there. I'd put Beth, man, if I'd have known about this house of bread, you know, be like house of bread, house of bread, house of bread in the morning. Whatever dad preached, I'd make. And uh, Sister Coping, what's her number? You say it. So far committed, 296,638. So far by faith, 205,931. That's a total of $502,569. Yeah, you ought to give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I had... We had these, these metal chairs that we would set up. And I remember one time I set up, I had 10 and 10. And, and Dad said, well, how many chairs are there in the, in the closet back there, Matthew? And I said, well, there's still probably about 40 out back there. I, he said, well, set them all out. I said, we literally have two people that come. I, I'm the one setting them out. You're the one just over there, you know, screaming at Jesus. I, I'm doing the hard work here, you know. And, and well he said we're not always going to have two people so go ahead and set out the rest of the chairs and so I'd set them out and then I was sitting there and getting reprimanded because I wasn't praying enough about the songs and just getting rebuked and hurt by and abused and taken advantage of and having to sing and writing songs I was just everything and, and we'd have church I, mean, I knew if I ever really wanted to ha have a hope for a blowout I could sing my song, Jesus. If I did Jesus, well, it's Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus. Well, it's Jesus, Jesus till the sun goes down. And I said it's Jesus. Well, it's Jesus. Annie, Annie would get up on that.
that second and she'd start doing this right here and it smelled like bleach and beer mixed together and throw up on the come on somebody without air conditioning with an accordion going ah, ah, ah. but she would worship God and chairs would go to the left and chairs would go to the right and the Holy Ghost hey I don't know what excuse you've got to sit on a padded pew in an air conditioned building with drums that have a house you ought to say I gotta praise him there's a lady did it in a bar room with an accordion and a 12 year old singing at her but I gotta praise him praise him praise him in the morning praise him in the noon time praise him And so if I ever had a friend come to church, I for sure wasn't going to sing Jesus. Because <laughs> I'm like, don't let Annie go off and embarrass me. <laughs> and I remember, and I've, I've told some of you the story, maybe I, I remember, I was a teenager. She said, I had my chair set up. I was sitting there smelling bleach, beer, beer and throw up together. That's a nasty smell. I was preparing the order of my songs. And she came up to me. And she said, Matthew, will you miskin wait about a McDonald's or sick dance? And of course I said, yeah, I want to know why you dance and do all that crazy shouting. You remember Annie? And we walked down the aisle and she said, I'm, I shout a lot. She said, because I've got to shout for the empty chairs right here. And I, she said, I'm shouting for the empty chairs right here. And she said, I'm shouting for my family that's going to sit here. I'm shouting. She said, I'm shouting for international ministries and refugees that are going to sit here. She said, I shout for my friends. And she said, I was wondering if you could shout for the youth group. One day there's going to be a youth group. Uh, and you're got to, I need you to shout for them. And you know what? I made up my mind. Uh, I wasn't going to sit on a pew. You know what happened for Annie Coping Cobb? Her sister got the Holy Ghost. Her other sister got the Holy Ghost. Her next sister, Fonsanta, got the Holy Ghost. Her brother-in-law got the Holy Ghost. Come on. You know who pastors the church there now? Her nephew pastors the church and all the seats are full and there's an international ministry. And you know what it was? It was an elderly lady with an accordion that said, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. And you know why we had a building and you know why we had a key little accordion? Because people like us. Come on, on a Sunday night in the United States of America, said, I'll fill out a card so that Mike, Diana, Matt, and Anna can go to the Netherlands. They'll do the work over there. They'll set up the chairs. Come on. They'll do the dancing in the empty rooms where it smells. They'll learn the other language. Let me tell you, when you put money in that thing, it's not just money. I was on the other end of it. I'm your pastor today and I just believe God's honored the sacrifice of my parents. Yeah, I've preached to crowds. Bigger, some of the biggest crowds in the upside movement. I'll tell you why. Because I had parents that put God first and raised me in a, in a mission field. And you know what I think God's doing? I think there's a mission field. There's a little missionary kid right now that God is anointing. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to link together with him. And I want to be as anointed as they are. My kids aren't doing that, but they're going to sacrifice here. We're going to sacrifice here. Hallelujah. So you got to praise him. Come on, praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him till the sun goes down. Sing it one more time. Praise Come on, him. praise Him. We're going to praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Come on, praise Him. We will praise Him. Praise Him till the sun goes down. Cash, cash offering tonight, 
$64,938.79. Somebody ought to give God praise. I'm going to give you my word. Every dollar of it, come on, is going to leave the building before the weekend's over. That's what we're going to do. We're going to give it to them and let them take it to the field. Are you excited? Come on, is that total? So far, total commit. This is commit. It's $432,229. Our total pledge is $788,394. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Hallelujah. High five your neighbor. Tell him the devil's having a bad night. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for this great truth. Amen. Thank God for this great Jesus name. Doesn't it feel good in the house tonight? Yes. Well, won't we have a time when we can a son, a daughter, a father, a mother that you've been praying for. I, I, I need you to prep how you'll act when they come home. How, how are you gonna how are you gonna act? Is, is it gonna be, you know, your your typical are you gonna go crazy? Are you gonna are your feet gonna move? Or is your mouth gonna shout? Are you are you gonna I just need you to do your practice? Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, my God, they probably you, you, no no do a little, do a little. Yeah. I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna come on, this is just practice. When I see you spinning like that, I'll know what happened in your life. My, my, my. What we're going to do is when, when we announce that total, that's how we're going to act. Because we gave. There's going to be somebody that's going to get saved. And that means there's going to be some mother, grandmother, brother, sister, cousin, or nephew that's going to be shouting like you were shouting because you gave. And we're not just going to get excited about ours coming back. We're going to get excited about funding missions so that others can come home. Are you excited about that? Come on, can we get excited about other people getting blessed? You know what the devil hates is people that love giving to God. Well, how much we got? We've almost got the grand total. All right. We normally do a special request on, on anybody on a song. So what's your, your song you want to, Brother Jonathan, last book, you got a, anybody? Got a, this is your time. You're always complaining. We don't sing the songs I like. And here you go. I'm giving you a wide open shot. And you're like, don't you be complaining. And somebody come up to you and say, I don't like the songs we sing. You say, well, you should have been at Beyond Borders. You and your silent. Have a little talk. Okay. You get to pick quite a few, though. I'm not trying. I know. I'll fly away. Brother Campbell is requesting I'll fly away. Do we approve? All in favor with I'll fly away? If you do not know the song, I will fly away. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'll fly away. Okay, some young people. All right, now get with somebody that knows. Come on up here. He doesn't know I'll fly away. This is going to be great to watch somebody be entered. What? Huh? Doesn't know it. I was going to say, you weren't raised in the fear and the admonition of the Lord if you don't know how to sing I'll fly away. I have failed as a pastor. Okay, come on. Y'all ready? Some glad morning we, we shall, shall see Jesus in the air. He's coming. You and me, 
So I said, I'm going to marry me a pretty one. Hallelujah. I married the prettiest girl in the whole wide world. And she's real smart. She writes in tongues. That's how spiritual she is. You know, she writes in tongues. And, and then I have to try to interpret it. It's just crazy. But that's all right. Huh? Well, you thank you, man. Amen. She's from, from, from this one. All righty. Hey, didn't this, didn't our volunteers look around here? I mean, I feel like I'm in a jungle. It kind of feels like I'm in a jungle. It's so hot. But look at this, man. I'm telling you, have y'all been out in the foyer? Isn't that just incredible? And uh, every volunteer that has worked so hard you guys I'm telling you y'all are the best it was amazing I tell you it took me so long to grow all these plants at my house I uh, I'm just kidding they're they're fake but thank God that money you gave ain't fake I hope it's not amen <laughs> we thought if we put green on the wall it might get more green in the offering you know I'm just kidding Hey, you ought to give our staff and every volunteer a great hand. Thank y'all. Hey, didn't the choir, didn't Sister Drea do an incredible job leading our choir? They, aren't they just the best choir in the whole world? Okay, so you've got our Matt. Michelle, come on, get up here. You get to, you say the totals. She said, you know, she just said she can't say numbers that big. Well, it's time to practice, amen. We got to practice being blessed, hallelujah. <laughs> Michelle, it's time to practice saying numbers that big, amen. I'm gonna tell you, we're not ready on the screen. Hey, aren't we a blessed people? I don't know of anybody, other kind of people that get excited and shout and dance about giving money. I think God just looks down from heaven and says, wow, those are my kids. And I feel like when Michelle gives this and you begin to give God praise, here's what you feel like is going to happen. I feel like God's going to start working some miracles in your life. 
I feel like when we announce and when we declare what we're going to do for those beyond us, that God is going to, there's going to be a culmination of faith in this house. Do you believe that? I wonder if you could go ahead and prepare to give God praise as Michelle gives our totals. And, and as you begin to worship God, I don't know whatever it is you need, but I think God's going to do some instantaneous miracles. I just feel it in the Holy Ghost. Uh, come on, there's something in my spirit that just spoke. God wants to work a miracle. So when she declares it, you don't have to go into moaning mode. You go into shouting mode. Uh, and God is going to pour out His Spirit. He's going to work some miracles. Are you ready, Michelle? All right, you practice in your head? All right, let's go. Tonight, you gave a cash offering of $71,138. You promised by faith $455,150. And promised is $541,904. That brings our grand total to one million sixty-eight thousand one hundred and ninety-two dollars. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I can't wait to see what God does as he opens the windows of heaven over you. And as he begins to pour out his favor and blessings, you be faithful, amen. I'll be faithful to make sure it gets to him. You be faithful to get it in that plate. And together we'll have revival, the greatest revival the world has ever seen. It's at our doorsteps. Let's have it. Let's do it together. Let's reach the world one more time. Why don't you put your hands together? God, I thank you. I pray that you would bless these most beautiful and wonderful people who come, God, and give sacrificially. God, they've given, Lord, from the depths of their hearts for the cause, for the mission that they believe in. We believe in you. We believe your promise, God, where you said, Lord, that you, God, would always have bread on the table. God, that you're never going to forsake us. The righteous have never been forsaken, and you won't start tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody say yes. Amen. Amen. I love you guys so and tremendously much. No words could describe that. But I want you to take time, step out from where you are, greet somebody, let them know you love them. Amen. Share with somebody. Amen. The good news. Tell them what Eastgate's doing. Amen. We're going to continue to celebrate this entire year as we give. Hallelujah. Reports are going to come in of the miraculous. Thank you all for giving. I love you. <laughs>